Hey there, welcome. We're on the second floor of our new build. And I want to talk to you in this video about four simple things that you should consider in the design phase of your um, truss construction. Uh, the first one's going to lead into the second one. The fourth one is one that I thought about after we've had these installed. And uh, so let's go and get right into it. The first thing that you want to consider is the length of the overhang here in your truss design and how far you come out. Um, in our build, initially our architect had specced a 12 inch eave overhang for this. Um, we bumped it out to 18 inches and I'm really glad that we did that. Um, you want to keep water away from the building. Um, depending on what material you're using for your soffit, you could go even further. Two foot um, would be uh, a great length to have as well, but sometimes if you're doing vinyl, um, that distance becomes a little more problematic on the soffit side. So number one, you want to add some distance to your eave length. Now, when you add that distance, this leads into number two, on your gable end, you have a longer um, length coming out. So we're 18 inches here on the gable end. I can see a spider making a nice nest there. Um, and so what you can add, and I didn't realize this until we got here, this is what's called, a, I believe, a drop cord on the gable end. And you see that the, the other trusses, the height goes right up to the, the deck sheeting, but on the gable end, it stops there and then it drops down and it drops uh, the length of a two by four. What that allows you to do is it allows you to bring these, uh, with, I don't know if they're outriggers or cripples, but these two by fours that are going out to on the, the gable end eave comes all the way back and gets tied in to this, um, the next rafter or excuse me, the next truss that is here. The advantage of that is it creates a much stronger eave and it's a lot simpler um, from a connection point for you on there. So a real simple little adjustment, a drop cord on the gable end is going to add strength to your um, eave and you want that especially if you're adding some more length onto that eave side. All right, the third thing, and this should be honestly standard if you're doing blown in cellulose, and I don't know if it is or not, but it definitely should be standard, is you want to create what's called a raised heel. I think there's some other terms for it, but uh, a raised heel. Some, some people might call this a drop truss. What we have here is this extra height um, along the edge of this, and that does a few things. What that really allows for is we're doing blown in cellulose and so it allows for our blown in cellulose to become the same height as it's going to be throughout the rest of the um, the attic and it gives us that nice 14 inches of depth on there also as you can see it allows us to bring our sheathing layer up bringing the sheathing layer up uh, is very helpful because that stops the wind from moving in and blowing that um, cellulose and getting it um, unevenly distributed. And you want it to be evenly distributed, not unevenly distributed. So a drop truss, in my opinion, is should be standard if you're doing an attic with any kind of blown in or bad insulation to get that detail right on the edge. Let's go to number four. This is the one that I forgot about. So let me explain number four. This is one that I just thought of as we've been doing this, and it's related to the whole concept of, with blown in cellulose, wanting to have the same depth all the way across and not wanting to have that depth disrupted. Well, obviously, uh, you're required to have access to your attic. And so most people are doing that through some type of ceiling, penetration, attic entrance, if you have to get to the electrical or that type of thing. We're not planning any storage in ours. It's just purely for that reason. And so while does it, it becomes difficult with the blown in cellulose, how do you keep that in place? How do you get things where you need them to be? 
um, super challenging. So what would be better is to come in from an exterior point. This is what we're looking into and we're considering. And so let me show you where that is and why it would have been helpful to have thought of this earlier in the process. So here you see our gable end on, this is on our east side, and what we're looking at doing is putting in an access panel up here. So why think about that earlier? Well, if we had thought about that earlier, what we could have done is we could have just designed an access door into this gable end paneling. Um, as it stands now, and as we're kind of figuring it out and working with our builder about the possibility of doing this, um, we're going to have to look at what type of adjustments um, need to be made in order for that access to work up here. What type of landing will we need um, if that's going to be able to happen. So if you can think on that on the front end, you can just get that built into this gable end truss and that would make your life a little bit easier. So one of the themes that you're going to see from me as we go through this build and if you've been following along is that I'm really mindful of you know, energy efficiency, air sealing, those type of details in the performance of the home and how to recognizing how to do that in an economical way. You know, you can build a Cadillac, you could buy a Cadillac or you could buy a Camry and they both perform really well. Um, the Cadillac uh, costs a lot more. And so uh, one of the ways that I kind of look at it and a lot of the information out there is like the Cadillac of houses that you find on YouTube, but um, a lot of people are in the Camry budget and with the right attention to detail, you can get great performance without um, the super high premium price tag, but you need to be aware of these things and sometimes you have architects that are aware of it, sometimes you have builders that are aware of it, sometimes they're aware of one piece or another piece and then the more knowledge that you bring to that, um, you can help be a part of that discussion and help to create a better performing um, building for yourself in the long run. So if there's something I missed, let me know down in the comments. Um, hit the like button. Catch you on the next one.